Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. It's that time. It's the time. It's the time of the week where we work on Sculliver <laughs> and put it together finally. We're going to put this top together today in this video. Hopefully it goes quick. And if it doesn't, I just speed things up like I usually do. So this is Sculliver. We are going to attempt to put this feller together. And I haven't, my brain says to do one thing and I don't know if I want to do it that way or not. So I'm kind of just like making things up as I go because that's what I do, right? So Sculliver does have, I'm going to spill that page out of there for a second because it falls out every time. Sculliver has a pattern side, which would be this side, the paper side of things. And then they give you the finished quilt side, so which would be the fabric side of things. It's not trying to super confuse you. But if you take the papers off beforehand, mark them so that you know which way they go. So if I took off A1, I'm going to put that A1 mark on this side of the fabric facing me so that I can see the A1 on the pattern side, on the, paper, the actual pattern picture side, goes this side way over here. And then A2 goes here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then it ends with A8. Now there's a direction. If you mess it up, you mess it up. <laughs> so what I have decided I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pattern, since it's in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H order, which makes it a little bit easier, I have decided to take this over to the floor in the other room now that it's nice and clean <laughs> and we're going to lay this out with the pattern side up i want to i mean not the pattern the picture side up or the finished quilt side up i'm going to lay it out that way and then i'm going to pick up each individual piece of paper and i'm going to take all these papers and i'm going to rip them off and then lay them back exactly how i picked them up and then stack them in rows and bring the rows in here and sew them. To me, that feels the easiest way to do things. So if you don't have a floor or a design wall to lay these out, I would say leave those papers on, take A1 and A2, right sides together, sew the side you need to sew, you know, so that it's proper, right sides together, and sew on that black line and so on and so forth. So I would say do that, but I think I'm going to get the papers off beforehand. That's what I'm going to do. Laying it on the floor in the other room and then all the pieces will stay right where they are and it's just going to be a back and forth game in here over there, in here over there, which is fine because the rooms are there and we need the exercise while we're making our quilt. So might as well do it that way. So let's go over finally, because <laughs> I've been talking this whole time. Let's go over to the other room now and lay all these pieces out on the floor. Okay, now it is time to crawl around on the nice soft fluffy carpet and lay this out. Let me put this in a uh, time lapse while I get it laid out and then I'll tell you the next step. Okay, so now that it is laid out, look at how awesome that is. It's only going to be more awesome once it's together. The goal here is to take a piece like this, tear all the paper off, place it back the way it was so that we can see, you can see where they match together in most spots, but I'm going to go through, pull all the paper off, which shouldn't take 
too long, but I'm going to sit in here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, brain fart. <laughs> I'm going to bring Scott in to help me rip papers and then place them back exactly where they are. That way I can pick them up by the rows and put the rows together. So I'm going to go ahead and get him in here and we're going to start ripping and you guys can just watch in time lapse.
Okay, so all the paper is now off. I want you to know that you need to be super uber careful because some of these, when you pull the paper off, the way we cut them, they're now bias edges, so they stretch. So be super duper looper careful because they stretch. Now, right now I'm letting it sit in this position because I'm actually taking the pattern itself, now that I'm on the actual picture side, so, oops, wrong one. Now that I'm on the picture side, I'm making sure that all the color sits where it's supposed to be sitting before I do anything. So I'm just double checking, making sure the positions of things are where they need to be before I pick them up. I did take now already and put my numbers on here. So I'm gonna pass in front of the camera. Don't mind me in my pajamas. I put all of my letters on here. So this is row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And what I'm going to be doing now is picking them up. Row one, piece one, and put it on top of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is how I personally keep things in order. I'm going to just stack them all up and take them to sew them. But before I do, I'm going to make sure three or four times before I move anything, because some of these pieces look a little odd or outside the lines, like they look like they meet up on the actual photo, but in real life, they're not meeting up. So I'm making sure right now that everything is where it's got to be. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right now is I'm just double checking things and then I'm going to stack them this one on top of this one on top of that one and so on and so forth until they are all stacked up, take all the stacks to the room and just start sewing the rows. And again, I will do this all on camera. So passing in front of the camera again. So that's what I'm going to do is pick everything up now by row and get it together. So let's pick up these rows. Okay, so I have all the rows organized. Row one, two, three, four, five. And yes, they're back in a stack, but they're in order the way they go, the way I like to put them to make it easier to put these together. So now all we need to do is sew the rows together. So I'm really just going to be taking piece one and piece two right from the top right sides together and with a quarter inch seam I'm going to sew these together. I am when I pressed the seams for the connecting to create one block I pressed them open. I'm going to actually be doing the same. I don't normally press open but since this is not going to be a used quilt and it's going to be used for show and it's not going to be used on a bed and washed constantly I'm okay with that with quilting and all because if you've watched previous videos of mine quilting wise I don't like to quilt quilts I don't like to do quilts with open seams yet quilting them especially if I'm if I stitch in the ditch or something I don't know what I'm quilting on this yet but if I did stitch in a ditch I don't want to split those seams open and I've already I can't say weakened them a lot but we've already sort of weakened the stitches by yanking paper through, you know, like crazy all over the place. So um, I'm going to be pressing my seams open. Let's get to doing some sewing now. I've got white thread in, which is pretty much what I used while piecing this. So I'm just going to continue on with the white thread and I'll bring you over here to the sewing machine and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so there's the right sides together. I'm just going to line them up. They're the exact this exact same size, even though the papers are gone. And what I'm going to do is with a quarter inch seam, I'm going to stitch this through. Back stitching at the start. And I'm also going to be nesting the seams, making sure everything stays nicely aligned. You can pin if you need to. I'm not pinning, but you can pin. The 
just making sure all the seams nest nicely, lining up where they're supposed to. Number one, done. That lines up, that lines up. That's a little off. And that's a little off. But you know what? I'm leaving it. So for now, I'm just going to press it to one side or another. I grab that next piece, flip it over like this, and start all over again. So I'm just going to line it up. Everything is the same exact size. Nesting the seams along the way. All right, there's number two. That matches, that matches, that matches. And that looks good. Okay, next, grab it, right sides together. I'm gonna just start it off real quick. Line up this bottom corner, making sure the rest of the piece is lining up. Sure, all these points come together. All right, and I'm also watching my seams too, making sure I'm crossing where I need to cross. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was supposed to line up, but they're all so stretchy. Okay, I'm just going to leave it because I'm not a perfectionist. All right, start with the next one. Right sides together. This is where leaving the paper on probably would have been better because then I wouldn't have this stretch. But then I would have had to take the paper out of the whole entire quilt. After it was already done which, you know, would have been a little bit harder. All right, those look good. Let's add the next. Okay, I'm just gonna line this up. Check that. Looks good to me. Looks good. There's a lot of bulk in a lot of these seams. All right. Right sides together. And then get that top corner. And I know I probably should pin, but I'm just not a pinner. Looks good. Last piece for row one. Making 
make sure the bottom is lined up, everything's lined up. All right, and obviously that one is good. So row one is done. What I do have to do is press all those seams open, but for now, and it's marked for now, row one, R1 is what I put, I could just set this aside. And none of these points that are slightly off are gonna bother me, so I'm just leaving them, because this piece stretched a little. So this could've went up a little bit from right here on up, but it's barely an eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna toss that row out of the way. If it'll stay tossed out of the way, just like that. And we're gonna start on row two. All right, so two pieces, right sides together. I did not flip or turn anything. I just flipped it over and that was it. They're lined up exactly the same size. Quarter inch seam. That looks good right there. The rest of it's just one solid piece. Grab the next, right sides together. That one looks good. So some of them are gonna be really nice and some of them are not. Like I said, you can pin at your junctions or pin the whole block, you know, and then go from there. Okay, this one's gonna be a slight struggle because there's an open seam right at the edge. Line this bottom part up, line that middle up, just holding it in place. Okay, let's check that. Looks good, looks good. Next. Good, good, good. That looks good to me. Keep going.
All right, row two is complete. So now I'm just going to put you in fast forward while I complete sewing all these together to make it easier. So I'm just gonna put you in front of me and you can watch me sew for a bit.
All right, now it is time to press all the rows. That's right. So I'm going to bring everything over here, lay it up there, and we're going to press one row at a time and then lay them nicely on the other table when they are done. So I'm going to go ahead. The whole row fits on my ironing board and I'm going to be pressing all of the seams open, which again, I don't normally do, but I am doing now. So it helps if you go through real quick and finger press them all open and then go back and use the iron on top. So I'm going to go ahead and put you back and fast forward. Well, I do this because this may take me a while. Pressing seams is kind of uh, monotonous. <laughs>
Okay, so all of the rows are pressed. What I'm going to do is pin them together row by row, and I'm going to hook them together in twos and then fours and then hook the fours together to make eight. So I'm going to go with what's on top, row eight and then row seven. I'm going to put that on top, obviously, right sides together. Pin at all those junctions because the seams are pressed open now. So it takes a little bit more, I guess, pinning, <laughs> pinning to make sure that your seams line up because there's no nesting the seam because they're not one side or the other. So there's no locking them together. So I have to pin to make sure that everything lines up. So I'm going to go ahead and pin the rows and then sew the rows. And I'm just going to leave you right here while I do that on a flat surface.
So now it's time to connect the two sections of four. So there's four rows from the bottom section and four rows for the top section. Now I need to connect those together and we'll have a quilt top. So I'm going to bring you back over here so you can watch me sew them. First, I need to pin the two together. It's a little bit bigger. There's going to be more hang. There's going to be more stretch. But let's do this. So before I reveal to you the finished quilt, you just saw I pressed all the row seams. So every row that I connected, they're all pressed open. What's this black fabric for you see in front of me? Well, I figured because there's so many, this is the bulkiest seam, bulkiest seam quilt I have ever made. There are bulky seams consistently throughout this whole entire quilt on the back side and on the front you can feel them all anyways the edge seams are they're a little too open for me like not finished off and I don't want the binding to wrap around and cut off some of the color at the end even though it only takes like a, well, it takes a little bit more than a quarter inch the way I bind but I have black fabric here it's not the same exact black fabric that they use in the quilt, but I'm going to make it work. You probably won't even know the difference at all. I'm going to take this black fabric and I'm going to cut seven two and a half inch strips. And I'm going to put this around the whole thing as a border to seal off all those edge seams so that when I'm quilting and everything, nothing is. I'm not taking any chances of anything opening up. I'm not taking any chances of hiding anything with the binding. I'm only going to take a quarter inch seam all the way around so that most of those ends can still be seen, but it also finishes it off. I am not going to add a second border. I'm just finishing it off with a two and a half inch strip of black. So it'll make it like 64 by 84 because it's 60 by 80 and add some quarter inches there because, you know, I'm only taking a quarter inch seam allowance from a two and a half inch strip, but you get the picture here. So it's 64 and a half by 84 and a half is what it will be with my borders, but you get the picture here. So I'm going to cut seven two and a half inch strips, one, two for this side, one, two for this side, one and a half for the top and one and a half for the bottom. Actually, no, I need eight. I don't know, whatever. I'll cut some strips and do this. I'm pretty sure I need only seven though.
Gulliver is top is done, and I haven't even revealed it to myself in full. So let's go do that. Yeah, usually you're looking at a quilt. <laughs> I have not seen this quilt yet. So let's hang it together. And again, don't mind me. I'm in my pajamas. Wow. That's all I got to say is, wow. I love it. I absolutely freaking love it. Now I got to quilt it. And I don't know what to quilt on it. But I have a general idea. So stay tuned for the video of quilting. It's not going to be done anytime soon because I have other things I need to get done. But look at that. It's done and it needs quilting. My Sculliver top is complete. So, congratulations, you have finished your quilt. Now, I do want to point out that a lot of my points do not match perfectly in this pattern. Some are right spot on and others are not. So I just want to say, do not get discouraged when piecing this because it's, it's a quilt and it's paper pieced and nothing is perfect. We are not perfect. I am not perfect. But this is the perfect quilt. There's lots of stuff that does not line up in this thing. So don't get discouraged if yours doesn't line up too. Just be proud that you have completed it. So we finished Sculliver. We just need to quilt it. Stay tuned for a future video of quilting Sculliver. I have a general idea of what I want to do, and it's actually going to be simple and hopefully have tremendous results. So stay tuned for that. It probably won't be next week. But thank you for following along with this sew along. I appreciate you guys staying tuned to finally see this. I mean, there was a lot of weeks, a lot of weeks. So as of today, March 1st, week 23, we've completed the Sculliver. Again, like I was saying a little bit ago when I was showing you the quilt, don't get discouraged. There is a lot of bulky seams in paper piecing and not just this pattern, but in plenty other patterns. So just don't get discouraged. <sighs> Breathe because you can do this because I just did it. And I started out as a beginner paper piecer. I don't paper piece all the time. So I was still in those beginning stages. And look at me now. I've completed Sculliver. So, uh, yay, it's done. Again, I got to quilt it. <laughs> and I'm dragging this video on, but I'm so excited. 
I'm so excited. I hid it from myself by rolling it up. So I, it needs to be ironed now if you didn't notice a second ago. But there's some places that need to be ironed out. But that's just because I was rolling it up as I was ironing it so that I wasn't seeing the whole thing. So that way I could see it with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video series. Again, a future video will come along and it'll just be the quilting of Sculliver. So thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.